Hello Globetrotters, it's Kate Pilcher here, founder and guide of Globetrotting. Today I put together a list of considerations for first time Globetrotters who are looking at dipping their toe into the addictive world of horse travel. In this day and age, time is precious and holidays are like gold dust, I get it. Especially if you only have a couple of weeks a year away from your desk, you want to choose the very best holiday to spend your time and money on. It's a no-brainer for me if I love to ride and I love to explore different regions and cultures and faraway lands from the back of a horse. I can understand when viewing potential riding holidays that you may get overwhelmed at the number of choices and what best ride would suit your ability, budget and expectations. So I've put together this video to help make your decision a little hassle free. Okay, let's start with riding experience. First things first, your riding ability will actually dictate what rides are available to you and those that aren't. If you're an intermediate to experienced rider, which I um, define as confident at all gates, so walk, trot, canter, you've ridden as a child or for a number of years and ridden a range of different horses in your riding career and more than comfortable cantering outside an arena. All of our rides are available to you from Kenya through to Tassie, Chile through to Mongolia to name a few of them. So if you're a beginner rider, which means you've got limited riding experience, you're not confident in a trot or a canter, then the rides I would consider are our Australian based rides or Mongolia, the South Island of New Zealand, Argentina, USA and Canada. Now for experienced riders listening to this, you might be thinking, I prefer not to have beginner riders on the same ride as me as I would like to have a change of pace, trot and canter. Rest assured, our rides that cater for beginner and advanced riders, the guides will split the ride if more experienced riders are wishing to canter or trot. Now, the next thing you need to consider is obviously budget. You need to ask yourself how much you want to spend on the ride itself. And remember, our rides don't include travel insurance, international flights or tips at the end of a ride. But what they do include is absolutely everything while on your horse riding holiday from unlimited riding, food, accommodation and a bloody good time. Now Kenya and Botswana are our premium blue chip riding destinations and deservedly so. They offer the X factor that no other riding destination offers. Up close and personal encounters with wild game. I'm talking elephants, lions, zebra, giraffe while being enveloped in white glove safari luxury. Now, Mongolia is on the other spectrum. It's extremely cost effective and if you have a good sense of adventure, happy to erect your own tent, eat hearty camp food and appreciate that itineraries don't always go according to plan, this is a winner for the budget conscious globetrotter. Now, our Australian and New Zealand rides fall around the $3,000 mark for six days all inclusive which is really good value for the level of riding, accommodation and horses. And then middle of the road budget, we've got the USA, Canada and South America. It's also very cost effective for most of our Globetrotters. The next thing for you to consider is how much time do you actually have? If you've only got a week, including travelling time and you're based in Australia, our native rides are great for an equine mini break. If you've got more than 14 days up your sleeve, then consider an overseas riding destination. The riding holidays in Africa, South America, Japan, USA, Canada, Mongolia, New Zealand, you're spending a bit of cash on flights. So make sure you book out two weeks plus to squeeze in a seven or 10 day ride and traveling time either side. Try and give yourself one or two nights in the country before the ride actually begins so that you have time to recover from jet lag before starting your riding holiday. Now, the next thing that you need to consider is what time of year are you looking at traveling? This is a major factor. Some of our rides are only available six months of the year and depends if you're choosing to travel in the Northern or Southern Hemisphere. I'll go through now a breakdown of what rides are available throughout the year. So all year rounds, we've got the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia, 
um, our rides in the Okavango Delta, Botswana, you've got Namibia, you've got the Masai Mara, Kenya. Now, from October through to April, you've got Tasmania in Australia, you've got our Man From Snow River rides in Victoria, um, you've got Japan, you've got New Zealand, you've got South America, which includes Argentina, Brazil and Chile. Now, June through to October, you've got Mongolia, Canada and the USA. Now, the next thing to consider, do you want to stay in the lodge and ride out each day? Or would you like to ride from A to B staying in different locations every night? There is a big difference between the two. So our lodge based rides gives you the comfort of a hot shower every night, a comfortable bed, no need to pack and unpack every second day and you stay put while exploring your local surrounds. All of our lodge rides give you plenty of hours in the saddle where most days you'll take a saddlebag lunch and spend six to seven hours in the saddle. So the scenery is always diverse and changing. These rides that are typically lodge based is our Tassie Tiger Trail in Australia, British Columbia, Canada. They also offer a pack horse trip. Um, Montana and Wyoming in the US, Japan, the Sierra Chicas in Argentina, um, and Estancia Adelaida in Chile. Now our A to B rides are when you're moving camp every second day to a new camping spot or hotel or a Estancia. What I love about our moving rides is you feel like you're actually riding with a purpose and I love getting into a new campsite of an afternoon. The quintessential moving rides are your Masai Mara in Kenya, Mongolia, Namibia, Torres del Paine, Chile, they offer a really great Estancia to Estancia ride, the Okavango Delta, um, in Botswana, our authentic cattle drive in Wyoming, America, and then obviously our flagship ride, the Kimberley ride in Australia. Next, rustic versus glamping. If you're the kind of rider that loves a gin and tonic handed to you while your horse is whisked away to be unsaddled, you'll prefer our glamping style rides. These riding holidays, you do not lift a finger from start to finish. I'm not kidding. Your boots will be polished for you, your washing will be done, there'll be three course meals, wine, all the bells and whistles. Or if you're comfortable with a swag underneath the canopy of stars or wrangling with a tent and assembling it at the end of a ride, then you won't mind our rustic rides. Whatever tickles your fancy, the good news is we have both. Personally, I like either depending on the country and how cold it is. So there you have it Globetrotters, hopefully this has given you an idea of what type of riding holiday suits you best. Thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe below.